Hello, scholars! As you've already noticed, I am wearing my hat. I know last week was hat day, but I really wanted to show you my hat that I wore. Well, today is Thursday, April 16th, 2020. Today, we are going to focus on the skills that we are learning, and hopefully we are able to fill out our chart, scholars. Today we are going to focus on the problem. Conflict is a, conflict is a, yes, conflict is a problem. And in order for us to figure out if there is a problem, it has to be between two characters. It has to be between two, between two, that is called external conflict. External conflict, get ready, go. External conflict is when two characters want opposite things, but they both can't get what they want. Your turn, get ready, go. When two characters want. So yeah, that's right. Let's do the roller coaster cheer. Get ready, go. Woo! Ah! Scholars. I know that each and every single one of you, it's such a smart cookie. Say, yeah, we are. Yeah, you are such a smart cookie, scholars. Today, in order for us to find external conflict, we have to look at the character's motivation. We have to look at the character's character motivation. Get ready, go. Character motivation is what the character, yes. Once we have found the character's motivations, each character's motivations, we have to see if they are the same or if they are different. If they are different, that is an external conflict because they both want different things. They both want, they both want, and if they both have di want different things, scholars, there is going to be a, a problem. There is going to be a conflict. Well, scholars, let's read today and hopefully we are able to find that conflict or that problem between the characters. Let's get reading. Chapter 7. Captain Cook Builds a Nest Very reluctantly, Jenny and Bill had to leave Captain Cook and go to school. Mrs. Popper was busy in the kitchen rather belatedly doing the breakfast dishes, and while she dimly realized that the penguin was going in and out of the refrigerator pretty frequently, she thought nothing of it at first. Well, meanwhile, Mrs. Popper had abandoned his telephoning and was now busy shaving and making himself neat in honor of being the owner of such a splendid bird as Captain Cook. But the, but the penguin, though, thus neglect, neglected for the moment, was by no means idle. With the unusual excitement and having to go to, to market earlier than usual, Mrs. Popper had not yet got around to straightening the house. She was an excellent housekeeper, still with two children like Jenny and Bill, and a husband with such untidy ways. There is no denying the fact that she had to pick up the place rather frequently. Say, poor Mrs. Popper! Captain Cook was now attending to the picking up. Into the corners of every room, he prowled and poked and pecked with a busy thoroughness. Into every closet, he stared with his white circled eyes. Under and behind all the furniture, he crowded his plump figure with little subdued, subdued cries of curiosity, surprise, and pleasure. And each time he found what he seemed to be looking for, he picked it up in the bark end of his red beak and carried it wantingly, proudly on his white pink feet into the kitchen and into the icebox. Colors, I want to know, how do you think Mrs. Popper will feel once she realizes that uh, Captain Cook was helping her around the house. Make sure you have evidence for it. Do not get tricked. I know that you're going to tell me your answer first and you will support it with evidence following with the sentence with, I know because, mm. So when I say go, I want you to look for your evidence. Go. Okay, tracking me? Yes. How do you think then Mrs. Popper will feel when she realizes that Captain Cook is helping her around the house to clean up? 
what makes you think this? I want you to say your answer or I want you to write it down or send it to your teacher so I can give you a shout out. Get ready, go. Those are great and that is a great answer scholar. Let's keep reading. As it occurred to Mrs. Popper to wonder what on earth the busy bird was up to, when she looked, she could only scream to Mr. Popper to come quickly and see what Captain Cook had done now. Mr. Popper, himself looking rather remarkable, as Mrs. Popper noticed later, joined her staring with astonishment into the refrigerator. Oh, look at, look at Captain Cook. Silly Captain Cook. Let's keep reading. Follow with me. Captain Cook came up too and helped them look. Ork, ork, he said with triumph. Mrs. Popper laughed and Mr. Popper gasped as they saw the result of Captain Cook's trips through the house. Two spools of thread, one white chess bishop, and six parts of a jigsaw puzzle, a, tea, a teaspoon, and a closed box of safety matches, a radish, two pennies, a nickel, and a golf ball, two pencil stubs, one one bent playing card and a small ashtray, five hairpins, an olive, two dominoes, and a sock, a nail file, four buttons of, of various sizes, a telephone slug, seven marbles, and a tiny doll chair. I'm not done yet, let's keep reading. Five checker pieces, a bit of graham of a graham cacker, a parachute cup, and an eraser, a door key, a button hook, and a crumbled piece of tin foil, half of every half of a very old lemon, the head of a china doll, Mrs. Popper's pipe, and a ginger ginger ale cap, an ink bottle cord, two screws, and a belt buckle, six beads from a child's necklace five building blocks, a darning egg, a bone, a small harmonica, and a partly consumed lollipop, two toothpaste, pat, toothpaste lids, and a small red notebook. I guess this is what you call the rookery, said Mr. Popper, only he could find any stones to build his nest with. Well, said Mrs. Popper, those penguins may have heaven ways at the South Pole, but I declare, I think this is one is this one is going to be quite a help around the house. Oh, said Captain Cook, and strutting into the living room, he knocked over the best lamp. I think, Papa, said Mrs. Popper, that you had better take Captain Cook outside for a little exercise. Good gracious, but you're all dressed up. Why, you look almost like a penguin yourself. Mr. Popper had smoothed down his hair and shaved off his whiskers. Never again would Mrs. Popper have to approach him for looking as wild as a lion. He had put one white shirt with a white tie and white flannel trousers and a pair of white tan oxblood shoes. He had got out of the setter chest with his black evening tailcoat that he had been married in and brushed it carefully and, and put it in on too. Put it on too! He did indeed look a little like a penguin. He turned and strutted like one now for Mrs. Popper. But he did not forget his duty to Captain Cook. Can I have a few yards of clothesline, please, Mama? Asked Mr. Popper. Scott, we are going to pause right here. I have a question for you. Scholars, why does Mrs. Popper tell Mr. Popper that he looks like a penguin himself? I want you to look for your evidence first. I want you to double check that you have the answer in your head and it matches your evidence, matches your answer. Go. All right, now that you have your evidence scholars, tell me. When I say go, say it out loud, go. Yes, scholars, I do agree. The book says on page 49, never again would Mrs. Popper have to re-approach him as a wild li lion. He had put on a white shirt with a white tie and a white flannel trousers and a pair of bright tan Oxford shoes. 
and I know that penguins are black and white as well. So that's why he, she thought that he looked like a penguin. Scholars, pause. Before, we, before I let you go, I know that there was a problem and I know that there was conflict between two characters. I want you to quickly go ahead and get a paper and I want you to write the answer down on your own. Get ready, go. I'm gonna give you about a minute, go. Ding, 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 you got it. Say it with me. Ding, 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 you got it. Yes, Mr. Popper wants a license for Captain Cook. That's correct. Scholars, who was the conflict between? Who was the conflict between? Write it down. Go. Yes, you got it. The conflict was between Mr. Popper and the man on the phone. All right, scholars, it looks like we didn't have any conflicts or any problems in chapter seven, but I want you to make a quick prediction. What do you think Mr. Popper will do next? What do you think Mr. Popper will do next? That is a great prediction. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. I cannot wait to find all of these external conflicts in the next chapter with you. Have a great day. Bye.